so good morning everyone welcome to day 2 of open stack so last week we discussed uh, about the very basic concepts of uh, cloud different format of the cloud services like infrastructure as a service platform as a service we discussed software and uh, function as a service out of these four major services in this course we are going to discuss about infrastructure as a service so i also discuss about the stack of the software so in that what happens exactly happens in infrastructure as a service that your very first layer of the stack which is your physical hardware that goes to the cloud service provider then i explain you about the outcome like uh, in infrastructure as a service what exactly you get as a cloud user so you get a virtual data center and all the different ser services of a data center for example like server storage networking router firewall everything goes in a virtual format today i'll discuss about a very small slide that is about the transformation of the traditional deployment to the uh, virtualization and containerization okay in yesterday class also of kubernetes i discussed this slide <clears throat> and i think it is a relevant topic to discuss uh, here also so see uh, traditionally we have been working in the industry uh, with our uh, you can say own customized approach for deployment of any type of data center so what exactly <clears throat> we were doing till now like we used to have our own own uh, physical server so we used to start with hardware and then here you can see uh, just a second let me change the pointer so here you can see in traditional deployment you have hardware then you install your operating system and then on top of it you run your applications when you go in a virtualization format so virtualization see virtualization what exactly virtualization here we are doing is the hardware virtualization so the piece of hardware which you are utilizing uh, in the traditional method by directly installing your operating system so that means on this piece of hardware you have this whole operating system running means this os controls your hardware when you go in virtualization mode <clears throat> here what exactly is happening in this piece of hardware you have an hardware virtualization uh, tools that we call it as hypervisor so many of you might have uh, heard about this uh, software called hypervisor so what exactly this hypervisor it it transforms your physical hardware into virtual hardware so this physical hardware gets translated into multiple virtual hardwares and in those virtual hardwares you install your operating system and then so here you can see that if you start so you have hardware you have operating system and then you have hypervisor so point to say is that you cannot install hypervisor directly on a hardware because you need to have an operating system and in linux so let me tell you one more thing about that in linux we have this hypervisor as an inbuilt feature of your kernel so if you are using a linux operating system you don't need to install hypervisor as a extra additional software rather it is a part of your linux kernel inbuilt part of your linux kernel so by default any linux linux kernel uh, is capable of uh, transforming your hardware into phys physical hardware into virtual hardware so with this hypervisor what exactly you do you translate your physical machine into different virtual machines and these virtual machines are independent they don't share anything across between vms rather they directly go to your physical hardware with the help of hypervisor they talk to your hardware and get the resources so this is your virtualization of hardware in vm format this we call it as infrastructure as a service what happens like hypervisor you can put in a single hardware uh, but only challenge you will face is that if your hardware goes down in that case all the vms running on top of that particular hardware will be impacted now questions come that this type of virtualization you have already done in your previous career also like you all you might have already done these kinds of uh, virtualization hands on either in your lab or in your practical or in your professional career also you might have deployed vm based uh, uh, different type of uh, uh, applications now thing is that if you are using single hardware and you are running multiple vms then you are in a risk that if your physical hardware goes down definitely your vms running on top of that particular hardware are also impacted there is no migration path available or auto migration or manual migration or any kind of redundancy when you go with this single host hypervisor now to overcome this problem we had a couple of solutions one was from vmware hypervisor so you might have seen vmware esxi one small example where vmware has its own orchestration concept there 
they have like different different uh, three four servers and then they have single consolidated GUI. From there you can just launch your uh, VMs on top of your specific uh, host. But there also you have this limitation that if we, uh, your VM goes down, I mean if your host goes down, then your particular VM is also impacted. There is no migration path in VMware ESXi also. To overcome all these challenges, uh, right? So we have uh, one, uh, you can say one uh, software that is called OpenStack. OpenStack is giving you an orchestration where you can run multiple hardwares and on top of it, so you are using again using hypervisor as a core of the uh, in virtualization, but there you have an orchestration. Orchestration means that whenever you have some problem with your VM, then you have an option that you can bring that VM down and then you can start that VM in some other host. But there also you don't have the live migration feasible at the moment. They are still working on the live migration, but I will not discuss that at this point at the moment because it's quite early to discuss. But for your information that in uh, OpenStack, you have the cluster of, uh, you can say a bunch of uh, physical hardwares on top of which you are running your virtual machines. Now, when you go to the public platform like AWS or Azure or Google uh, Cloud Platform, there also you have similar kind of thing, but there you don't experience any kind of downtime because they have their architecture very beautifully designed and they don't show the topology architecture to external world, how exactly the hypervisors are getting, like your VMs are getting migrated to other hosts or how they are managing host or how they are controlling or doing administration. So this is about the public platform that in public platform, you never come to know about the internal architecture of the cloud uh, provider, right? This was all about your virtualization of the hardware. Another thing technology was ongoing in parallel that is your containerization. So containerization deployment where we discuss like uh, we have the Kubernetes and orchestration tool, which helps you in orchestrating your containers. So what exactly is containerization that you have a hardware, you have an operating system, and then on top of your operating system, you have the container runtime or you have a Docker engine. So what exactly this software does, it converts your, your operating system, your operating system into logical operating system. So I'm not using word virtual, rather I'm using the word called logical. So what exactly happens if this is an operating system, if this is your host and this is your operating system, so a part of that operating system becomes a zone that we call it as a container. And it is an isolated zone where the operating system itself cannot access this particular container. It cannot go inside that container to see data. Similarly, you can host n number of containers on top of your operating system and all the resources like CPU, RAM, storage, everything is allocated to the container on the runtime basis by the operating system with the help of this container runtime. So this container runtime actually transforms your operating system into multiple logical operating systems. So this is about the containerization. We already have a session ongoing for Kubernetes. This is a separate topic, which I will not discuss today, but I thought that this slide should be presented to you to explain the three different type of technologies. The one is the traditional legacy, which we have been working till now. The other one is the infrastructure as a service, hardware virtualization. And the third one is your platform as a service, which is called as a containerization. So these three things are running in parallel. This one is already in legacy mode. So most of the uh, products in nowadays are already on uh, virtualization in VMware, or you can say virtualization VM mode. And now they're getting transformed into the containerization. So this is the how technology is evolving, right? So if somebody ask you or you yourself ask yourself, like what is the difference between an infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, then I will recommend you to go through, go through this slide. Okay, moving ahead, we will discuss about OpenStack because this is an OpenStack session. So we will stick to the uh, topic. Now, what exactly is an OpenStack? So many of you might be already uh, aware about OpenStack and are already working on this OpenStack, but most of you who are not working on OpenStack, let me tell you what is OpenStack. OpenStack is an example of infrastructure as a service. So in OpenStack is uh, when you use OpenStack, what you get as an output is an infrastructure as a service. It is an open source software developed by Open Infra Community Foundation and the community. So it is a software developed by a community, a community which works for the welfare of the society. They don't, they believe that uh, software should not be paid. It should be free available to everyone without any license. And the concept is that the source code should be open. Everybody should have right to go and check the source code and modify if they need it. 
so free software available for anyone to use without any licensing cost like in today's time if you see if you want to use some specific software you need to purchase a license right without license you cannot utilize any software so you feel like uh, if it was available for free of cost then it would have been better for you right so this is the concept which community follows that software should be free it should not be charged to anyone the source code is open uh, the source code of openstack is open for everyone even you me and anybody who want to see the source code of openstack can go on the github and check it is a public uh, account so you can check the code of the openstack if you believe you want to modify the code of openstack you are free to modify if you want to become a developer if you want to become a developer so anyone can contribute in its development so openstack is a community it is a software developed by the community which is a combination of the developers worldwide who contribute their development skills towards the development of this software so if you feel like you are a developer and you want to contribute towards the openstack as a uh, like with the role of a developer you can contribute and you can also be part of the openstack release cycle right openstack software it is available in below models to users so if you are an user and you want to use openstack how um, uh, you can get this software see one is that you can get it from distributor so openstack has some distributors so such as red hat Mirantis, Rackspace, Canonical, Debian, Oracle, IBM, VMware, HPE. They all are the distributors. So if, for example, you don't know what to do or for enterprise level where companies look for the post uh, purchase support also, like for example, if they are running an open stack and they have some issue in their production system, then to whom they are going to reach, right? So they need some, some support from the organization. So therefore the distributors such as Red Hat, Mirantis, Rackspace and all these, if you purchase red hat i mean this uh, open stack from them so it is called as red hat open stack mirantis open stack rackspace open stack canonical ubuntu dex uh, i mean open stack debian open stack oracle open stack that means these open stacks which you are going to purchase from these specific companies are the are going to be charged they are not available for free of cost because these companies are selling these open stacks and they are giving you post installation production support also if you face any kind of problem but if you believe that no i don't want to go with this model i want to uh, develop my own open stack do it yourself do it yourself means you can have your own open stack means you can create create and customize your own open stack by modifying its code you can take open stack code and you can uh, create your own open stack and you can call give it your name right so you can create your own open stack and you can sell it in market also because there is no licensing issue if you want to purchase uh, you have you can go and purchase from these distributors if you want to create you can take the source code and you can create your own open stack and you can sell it to other companies then there is third type which is actually not a standard one but still like for uh, learning and development purpose so for example if you want to learn open stack or you want to do some r and d on top of your open stack so you can use dev stack and pack stack see these two methods dev stacks and pack stack uh, open stack software are very free and also available very easily but you should not go with any commercial deployment or any commercial setup for using these two methods because these are ideally meant for your uh, learning purpose or development purpose if you are going with commercial it is your call but definitely if you run in a problem then you are not going to support from anyone now you can use openstack means the openstack software you can take and you can install in your in your hardware and then you can provide public or private cloud services to anyone right so if you deploy openstack in your uh, data center so if you for example if you own a data center you can deploy openstack and then the services of openstack you can sell as a public model you can sell to publicly or if you want to sell in a private model you can do it in private model so i hope you are clear with public and private if you are not clear then we will discuss this point in the last of the section when we take question and answer now what you get you get full control on hardware and software fully secure and reliable for your enterprise usage enterprise usage means that you start from your hardware data center you have your own then on top of your hardware you install openstack software and then on top of openstack you uh, provide services to your customer it could be your private customer it could be your public customers it could be anyone but you as an owner have full control for your complete data center 
where as if you go in a public model like amazon aws or azure uh, in that case you don't have control on the hardware and the software of the cloud right you only uh, are responsible for the services of open uh, of the uh, cloud services so this is reliable for enterprise usage because enterprises like telco it they don't want to like uh, directly go on the public platforms because their applications are quite sensitive and critical mission critical so they don't want to go on the public platforms for on the public data centers rather they want to have their own private data centers and then on top of it they want to run their own private cloud now OpenStack is a second leading open source software after Linux. So in industry, the first revolution of uh, software was uh, oriented toward Linux operating system. So Linux was the first open source software which uh, revolutionized the world, IT world. Then OpenStack is the second leading software after Linux, which is an, another open source example, which is revolutionizing the world in terms of free software usage. Now talking about the open infra community, which is the actual owner of this OpenStack software. So let me give you some history about uh, like OpenStack project. So this OpenStack project was very first created in 2010 by Rackspace and Ansolab. So Ansolab was a part of a uh, NASA. So they were doing contracting for NASA and Rackspace. They did a collaboration and then created a project called OpenStack. OpenStack community was created. So OpenStack community was formed in 2010. The community was, uh, uh, the purpose of community was that too, that this Open Infra Foundation, which is now we call it as Open Infra Foundation. The new name of the community is Open Infra Foundation and Community. Formerly it was known as OpenStack Foundation. It manages the OpenStack code. So the OpenStack, the generic community one. So I'm re-emphasizing the word called Community OpenStack. So Community OpenStack is the actual OpenStack which has been developed and it is a free open source software. The OpenStack which you might be using in your organization could be a customized one or it could be a distributor one based on the company which your company has selected, right? So this community is a non-profit organization and the aim of the community is to promote the open source software and keep it as a free software as so as much as possible like they they believe in a principle of free software so this was about the open infra community this was some theoretical kind of uh, thing you might feel like uh, i'm discussing why this theory but just for your uh, knowledge purpose you should be aware that what is a community open stack and what is a company open stack so the uh, if you have any confusion again please go back to this slide Check from here, distributor OpenStack, Red Hat, Mirantis, Rackspace, Canonical, Debian, Oracle, IBM, VMware, or do it yourself, companies creating their own OpenStack, or community like a dev stack, pack stack, free softwares. Or if you want to like, uh, you want to create your own personal OpenStack with a code by taking source code, that is also possible within this second mode. Even your company might be also uh, taking the code of the OpenStack and creating their own OpenStack. So I don't know which model your company is following, but these three are the possible ways in which you can obtain the OpenStack software. Now I will discuss about the OpenStack visualization. So visualization when we say, so what exactly happens that you have a real data center, right? I, if you remember, I told you that everything starts from the actual data center. So nothing is possible if you have a physical data center. So the very first layer of any kind of technology deployment is your real data center. So what do we, do we see in real data center? We see real servers, right? Real, these are the real servers, real storage units, real networking, uh, like uh, real switches, then your real data, virtual router, sorry, routers, not virtual routers. So these are the physical devices in present in a, any data center. So if you have this open data center with yourself, means you are the owner of this data center. And on top of this uh, data center, you deploy your OpenStack software. So this OpenStack, you are deploying, you are installing on top of your physical servers. So let me tell you one thing that you don't deploy any OpenStack software on any storage, or you don't deploy any soft OpenStack software on any uh, uh, switch or any router, because these are not the servers. Any kind of software can be deployed in your servers. So whatever uh, software you deploy, you deploy in uh, your server, but these servers are going to talk to the storage, this networking and this uh, router for communication and storage purpose. So definitely they are the part of the uh, complete data center, but 
the software actual software of uh, OpenStack is going to be deployed in these uh, servers. So this is actually a collection of servers. So it's not single server. Whenever you create your OpenStack based data center infrastructure as a service model of cloud, you have n number of servers depending on the rack capacity. So your rack it could like host 64 servers or it could host like uh, depending on what is the capacity of your server rack. So you can like create any uh, you can say uh, n number of servers in your uh, data center. You can put it as a part of a cluster. You can say it is a part of OpenStack cloud infrastructure as a service. And then what actually you are going to provide as a service to customers. So to customers, you are going to provide virtual machines. So you will provide them virtual machine. You will provide them virtual network, virtual storage, virtual firewall. So all these are the infrastructure as a service and these are in the virtual format. So this is your OpenStack outcome. What you actually provide to your customers. Now talking about the release cycle of OpenStack. So I will discuss about the release cycle of OpenStack because it is very important. See, this is a section where I feel many of you get confused because whenever I ask a question to anyone that what is the release of OpenStack you are working, people may say that we are working on OpenStack 14, we are working on OpenStack 16, we are working on OpenStack 8. But let me tell you that there are two types of open stack. I have already mentioned one is a community open stack and one is your company open stack, customized one. Now the release which you are referring could be a example of customized open stack, right? And we might not be aware of that release number. But when we say community open stack, so the release cycle of open stack is that it follows the alphabetical numbers, so nomenclature. So all the release of open stacks are like alphabetically A, B, C, D, E, F like this. And every six months, the community releases a new version of open stack. So starting from October, 2010, when this open stack was very first released, the very first release of open stack was Austin. So it started with alphabetically A Austin in October, 2010. And at that time, Austin had only NOAA and Swift service. So if you know OpenStack, you know what is NOAA and Swift. If you don't know OpenStack, don't worry, I will tell you in the later classes. The latest release of OpenStack, community release of OpenStack is Xena. So if somebody asks you what is the latest release of OpenStack, you can first get a clarity from that person, whether you are asking, is it a community release you are asking or a customized one because community is Xena. This is the 24th release of OpenStack. So in, you can see in last 12 years, they have released 24 uh, versions of OpenStack. And earlier release of OpenStack, let me tell you before Xena, what was that? Wallaby. So I'm going in a reverse order. So Wallaby, Victoria, Usuri, Train, Stain, Rocky, Queens, Pike, Okata, Newton, Mitaka, Liberty, Kilo, Juno, Ice House, Havana, Grizzly, Folsom, Essex, Diablo, Cactus, Baxter, and Austin. These are the total releases of OpenStack, which are till now available. And the latest one, which we are, uh, we can see at the moment is Xena. A new one is in progress. Next month it will get released. That is your yoga. So yoga will be released on April. And this is the current one. Now coming back to your uh, company OpenStack. So when you say your company OpenStack, so if it is a Red Hat OpenStack, in that case, the release could be like Red Hat 6, 7, 8, 10, Red Hat 16, like this. So Red Hat has its own release cycle. And it is not necessary that Red Hat or Mirantes or any other company, they also release their open stack every six months because you know companies don't release software every six months. They release software on annual basis, right? So if they go on annual basis, definitely your version of open stack, your customized version of open stack, could be based either on like Victoria or it could be based either on train or it could be based either on Wallaby, depending on your company, how R and D, how they are following the open stack releases. So suppose if I say like my company, my company might be following the current release of open stack based on train or your company could be uh, like uh, the open stack, which your company is using could be based on the latest release of Usuri or Victoria. So don't get confused in the community release of open stack and the company release of OpenStack, right? So I'll move ahead from this very small section. 
so this is actually a ecosystem of openstack so this uh, slide gives you complete services of openstack complete services of openstack means what are the different type of services openstack offers to a user everything is listed here we don't need to learn everything because they are not relevant to us it is similar to a portfolio you see on um, like amazon aws so if you log into aws you see a complete portfolio where you see in a catalog multiple services which you might not be even using it right similarly the openstack also has the services which people don't use on day to day basis but still there are certain services which you should be aware and what are the major one so we will discuss major one services in the upcoming classes not today but in upcoming classes we will discuss each services but let me tell you today what are the important services we should focus as an open stack administrator or as an open stack user so i am going to cover this uh, session from both perspective whether you are a, you are an open stack user or you are an open stack administrator from both point of view so let me tell you very first thing you encounter in open stack is the gui if you connect open stack the very first thing you find is the gui which you call it as horizon dashboard dashboard means your gui gui dashboard from where you can log in with your username password with your account and then you can perform any kind of activity you want to do whether you want to do any kind of administration kind of work or you want to do any kind of user point of work like you want to create a vm you want to create a network or from user point of view like you want to create a user you want to create a project or you want to create an external network so everything is possible with the help of this horizon gui there is one more service ec2 api that could not be relevant to you but yes still openstack offer this services called ec2 api this is actually to integrate your openstack with aws so leave it for the moment because it's not relevant come to the important services the very important services in openstack is your nova nova is actually service which is uh, responsible for launching your virtual machine so if you want to create a virtual machine in openstack it is done by nova next important service in openstack and very critical service in openstack without which openstack cannot run is a keystone arrest everything it is possible that you may run you may install but without keystone you cannot run your openstack why because this is responsible for the authorization identity so it is responsible for identity and authorization of the resources services and users if you don't have keystone running believe me your openstack will not run so this is very critical another important service in openstack is your uh, let me check where is glance uh, glance 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 uh, okay i'm not able to visualize glance but let me tell you there is a service called glance yeah here it is yes shared services so we have glance so what exactly is a glance see glance is a repository i'm giving you a layman's definition it is a repository where you store the images of your virtual machine so what happens that when you create a virtual machine so in virtualization mode we have one one very big advantage that in normal uh, installation method if you remember that if you have to install operating system from scratch then what you do you insert your idvd or iso image and then you start the installation process so installation process is basically like it will ask you some user questions like uh, what is the host name what is the ip you are going to configure for this what is the language what is the keyboard these basic terminologies questions it is going to ask and then it's going to take 15 to 20 minutes depending on the cpu and other uh, resources it is going to take some time to install your operating system now these 20 30 minutes are actually and you uh, you can say and wastage of your time because you are spending 20 minutes in installing an operating system and 20 minutes in a production is very critical time right if i ask you that you have a production outage on going and you have to create a new server and you say that i need 20 to 30 minutes just to install an operating system then it is not acceptable right because you are going to take another Uh, um some more time for your application for your clustering and other things and 20 to 30 minutes for operating system is not acceptable what is the benefit in virtualization mode that if you install your operating system in a virtual mode then you can export that virtual machine as a disk like vmdk or uh, you can take qcow 
you can export that vmd can into qcow2 mode qcow2 is basically an image format where you can export your vm into an image uh, simply you can say a file that file you can just store in this openstack not only in openstack let me tell you it is possible even in your vmware it is possible even in your virtual box so suppose uh, let me give an example like uh, i have created a virtual machine an openstack virtual machine in my laptop and that vm image i export and uh, i export that disk into vmdk format and then i share it to you over email or via uh, share storage and then i ask you that you just import this disk and then you can directly start your vm from from the point where i powered it off so this is an advantage you don't need to follow the again installation process you don't need to waste your time in that part and you can directly get a system up and running so this is an advantage so what happens in openstack we have a repository called images repository glance where you can store your vm images and whenever you need that vm instance you just simply go and select that instance and it will launch instantly without wasting any time so when you reboot your when when it is powered on it comes in that state from where that image was installed so this is a very good uh, you can say time saving concept of having images in openstack it is possible in public platform also in public platform also you don't go and install like uh, you do complete os installation right you just have an images provided by the uh, your provider so amazon provides you standard images those standard images when you select you directly get in your operating system you enter your operating system with the username and password but what happens like if you have your own customized image customized image means that this operating system is based on your own requirement with your application in that case you can have your customized image and you can put that image in glance or you can put that image in aws also it is possible there also it is possible here also so this is very one of the important service right now the next uh, important service a very critical service in openstack is your neutron neutron is very important because it is related to networking so whatever virtual network you are going to bring to your operating to your virtual machine inside your vm whatever network you are going to use that network is going to come from the neutron service so this is again a very important service in openstack then the next uh, another important service which i should say is your sender so we have different type of storage services okay so if you uh, go with the traditional method that you get an hard disk and you just connect your hard disk to your operating system then what happens that you have to first get it recognize after recognizing what you do you partition that uh, hard disk right you partition it after partitioning what you do you create a file system so file system could be like ext3 ext4 xfs or it could be ntfs depending on what type of uh, operating system you are going to use in linux we have ext3 ext4 and we have xfs file system so these file system you have to create and then after creating only you are uh, you can use your hard disk so this is your traditional traditional storage so same thing comes with your block storage in block storage you basically get a hard disk you can say a slice of your hard disk whatever capacity you need in a form of a volume and then that volume you attach to your vm and after attaching you can create your own file system and then you can start storing data so this is your sender where you have a flexibility to create your own file system this is called as a block storage there is another storage service which is called as an object storage which is swift so object storage service is what uh, so let me tell you this is a rare case of example because you in your day to day operation you very often only see this kind of object storage but what exactly is an object storage it is a kind of a library system so what happens in library if you have seen in your real libraries where book libraries which you go so you find that all the books are stored with some tags right so specific to some themes or some uh, category books are stored and uh, if you want to look for a particular book you can go to that particular row similarly here also the data so here you don't control file system rather what happens everything is managed by this storage itself what it does it divides uh, your complete uh, data into two part one is the actual data and one is a metadata so what is a metadata metadata basically is a set of information which is used to call the actual data so you are not bother how the data is getting stored like if you have a text file if you have a media file if you have a like a, a powerpoint presentation different type of data these the different type of data is getting segregated with this storage itself and then it is creating a tag called metadata and whenever you want to call so user want to uh, call data so what user does it just simply call the api with the metadata and the data is retrieved so you are not bother how data gets stored inside the storage so this is object storage and uh, i will tell you what is an example of object storage 
is your glands so glands uses object storage so if you want to find a, like a real life example it is a glands so glands uses object storage now coming back to block storage so i explain you what is a block storage these two kind of storages you are uh, like uh, experiencing in your day to day basis operationally in your company now there is a third type of storage called file system now file system what happens that you don't create file you don't uh, like uh, uh, get the block storage you don't create a file system you do nothing you simply plug and play plug and play means like you might have integrated an nfs in your projects in your uh, experiences if not then no issues i will tell you simply like uh, you have already a dropbox so what happens or a sharepoint so when you sync your sharepoint with your local drive so what happens that uh, you see folders in your system and whatever data you store in your local folder in your local folder it actually doesn't get stored in your local machine rather it directly goes to the external storage so this is called as file storage this is one of the advanced service of openstack which openstack is offering in and the service name is manila but you might not be uh, seeing this particular service in your openstack in your customized one my like for example if you say like you are working in your company so in your company i am not sure because see because when i say uh, when in my company this particular service is still in pipeline so whenever we get a new release of our company open stack we will see this particular manila but right now we don't see manila in our company uh, release so that's what i told you that this particular service you might also not see in your organizational open stack because your organization might have not adopted this particular service see what happened well, let me tell you one more thing that the op uh, services of open stack which you see here all the listed open stack services some of them are mandatory without which you cannot run open stack but some of them are optional so it is your up to your company what services they want to use if they don't want to use they are free to remove it they they are not like uh, imposed that you have to provide that services right so totally on the company decision how they want to which service they want to pick for their own uh, open stack so these are the basic services which i wanted to explain with you another other than this let me tell you one more important services because uh, i receive an email from one of you and it was a very interesting uh, topic i would like to discuss here because i was happy with that some somebody came up with an idea the idea is that i don't know what exactly i don't want to name that person but uh, i will uh, discuss that idea see the idea says that uh, they want to have a like they have an open stack an open stack cluster and they want to have a create some custom script and that script should log in and get the complete infrastructure information like cpu resources uh, cpu resource consumption ram consumption storage consumption or the vms number of vms so that they can present some kind of a dashboard to their customer that see these are the services being used in the open stack it could be like real time data or it could be like an offline data or a periodic updated based data so this concept came to me i will definitely discuss that concept but i wanted to explain like discuss with you also that these are the things possible in open stack also it is possible in uh, aws also it is possible everywhere but it's only about like how you want to do your automation so this can be an example of automation but what tools you are going to use for your automation that is important so here if you want to use uh, similar kind of things then you have a cli tool uh, supported by open stack open stack has created a project or service you can say uh, so, uh, there is a service in open stack called open stack client i will discuss this service in upcoming classes not today but let me just give an overview that this open stack client is a very helpful tool a unified tool which you can install in your laptop also and once you install this client in your laptop in your python it is basically a python based tool so if you install in your machine in your local laptop or anywhere and if you connect to your open stack your production open stack any kind external open stack with the credential so what it is going to do whatever setup command you are going to fire from here it is going to directly execute on open stack so you don't need to connect open stack and then you don't need to run each services command individually like for example if you want to do some operation on nova or you want to do some operation on swift or cinder so you don't need to call each services one by one rather you have a unified client a unified client says that there is a single command and then you have an argument so for example if you say open stack space nova open stack network open stack uh, volume open stack uh, uh, glance open like image open stack uh, you can say keystone so you don't need to like go and call each services one by one rather you just simply 
from this client you call, give a single command with an argument and it will go and take care of your that operation so these are the very helpful cli tools available in openstack now other than that we have so many services which i think are not relevant to be discussed at the moment but i remember one of you told me that does openstack offer containerization so yes now nowadays the community release of openstack supports containerization and the name of the service is zoom so if you install zoom services in your uh, in your openstack you can provide containers it does containerization of the uh, uh, like it does containerization so it also supports containers nowadays uh, but it's like a totally up to your decision like your company is going to use uh, openstack containerization or they are going to use kubernetes that is totally their call openstack also provides you the load balancing service so for example you have 5 vms and you want to distribute your load in all 5 vms then you can use this service of openstack called octavia and in octavia what you will do you you will get a load balancer a virtual load balancer where you get distribute all your load across the vm on the fashion which you want like round robin or uh, active active it is totally up to you it also provides a dns service so if you want to have a dns in your openstack that is also possible with the community openstack see whatever services i am telling you here is the community based openstack i am not discussing any customized openstack because i don't know the internal architecture of customized openstack it could be like either from red hat it could be from mirantis but i don't know what exactly is the architecture inside their system so i am going to discuss only the generic openstack and you need to correlate this with your own company uh, openstack also there is one more important service in openstack which is called as the bare metal ironic service this is very important service it is important for the hardware life cycle management so what happens like if you have uh, more definitely you are going to have more than one uh, physical hardware to be used in your openstack right you cannot deploy openstack in a single hardware that is not a, a commercial solution it could be an, like uh, you can say it could be a r and d lab but it cannot be a commercial system where you have only single hardware so when you have uh, multiple hardwares definitely you need to have some service which need to control your hardware right which should control which should power off power on at the time of requirement or if you want to join a new hardware in your cluster definitely there has to be some service so the name of the service is ironic ironic is used to do the life cycle management of the hardwares other than this you have some monitoring services like people who are interested in monitoring like uh, we want to see the resource consumption we want to see uh, like all your optimization we want to optimize or you want to do billing so suppose if you create a public open stack so what happens in public open stack you sell services to customers and definitely you are going to charge them so for charging you need to have some uh, services or tools in your platform which can do this charging part so these are the two tools available in open stack which can be used for charging and billing right so these are the things which i will discuss more in detail uh, also i will discuss about the deployment uh, uh, process how open stack gets deployed we have cola ansible we have open stack charm triple o by post kyobe open stack helm open stack ansible open stack chef these are the different deployment methods means if you want to deploy open stack you can choose any one of them the mess i will say the most preferred method for open stack deployment is triple o i will explain you what is triple o when we discuss in other classes but uh, for today i'm just giving you an overview of the basic basic terminologies which we are going to see in the upcoming classes of the open stack one more you know, service which we will definitely discuss is heat it is very important service whenever you want to have an automation of your uh, process deployment so suppose if you have a vm deployment or an application deployment so manually what you do you connect open stack and then you create your network you create your cpu flavor template then you create your volume and then you go finally you create your network and then you finally launch an instance what happens this is a manual process in industry we have some tools available so you can even create your own automatic tools which can directly do this all kind of deployment automatic vm deployment right so you might have heard this word called automatic vm deployment so there are tools which can do automatic deployment of your vm on top of open stack that is possible with the service in open stack which is called as heat so heat basically it provides templates it creates a stack between open stack and your third party tool with that third party tool you can fire commands and then your vm will be 
uh, created automatically even it can do the life cycle management of that particular vm suppose you want to terminate vm you want to create a new vm you want to restart vm everything is possible uh, with the help of this heat service so these are the basic services which i thought i should discuss with you before we uh, actually land into the detailed session of the each services so yeah i so from this i completed my today's session now we will have an open forum for question and answer you are free to ask your questions please go ahead krishna i have question on open stack client okay. i'm sorry manisha uh, uh, so i mean uh, what i understand that we are not integrating it with the open stack uh, we can directly run it right we are going this, to fetch the information or are we doing some integration with the uh, open stack see this open stack client is actually a very small software you can say or tool this tool by default will be present in your open stack also in open stack environment also it will be there in your under cloud and you can simply go and run uh, all the commands because nowadays whatever command we are running are a unified command so we run that okay. command with the help of this open stack client it can also be installed in your third party machine also so suppose you can install this open stack client in your linux machine if you have create a linux machine a separate linux machine and then you can use that particular client to talk to your open stack so rather you go and connect your open stack dashboard rather you fire command uh, remotely also it is possible suppose uh, if i install it in my local system yes. and uh, i am having two sides of an open stack or two different customers okay so which one is it will have to help, it has to go to connect right and that is my question yes. i mean yes so in that case what you need to have two things one is your credential file so okay. you know that whenever you log into your open stack you have a credential file source rc file so you need to have a source rc rc file in that source rc file you have your uh, dashboard gui then you have your project name then you have project id username your password and then you need to have a physical connectivity ip connectivity from your machine towards the customer open stack and if you have provided all things are in place whenever you run source rc it will connect to that particular instance of open stack and then you can run those command you want to connect to another instance then you just need to source the another source file and then it will connect you to the another instance of open stack understood krishna thank you question krishna ji manish here yes manish uh, as you discussed in uh, open stack uh, red hat marantis and rack spaces from company uh, yes. canonical debian oracle they are from uh, which then uh, they are communities they are basically a communities canonical is a community debian is also a community and they are not a company rather they are a community okay so okay. if you get like uh, canonical is like uh, uh what we say canonical ubuntu open stack or debian open stack so if you install uh, open stack from ubuntu or from debian so in that case also it is a free open stack and if you face any kind of a challenge like you need any operational uh, you want to raise a ticket to them for any support then you can uh, directly talk to that community that community will help you in resolving those issues okay. so you can say yeah these are also one of the free free open open stack software Okay. Okay. Uh, in my organization, uh, they uh, one organization has deployed OpenStack for us, and that is a Debian-based OpenStack. Mm -hmm. They have installed this OpenSense firewall, a Debian stack, uh, OpenStack. They have installed. So now uh, we are now we are facing one issue. We uh, now we have created multiple VMs, and uh, we want to uh, access those VMs through um, uh, through uh, on the on the through uh, browser. So do we need to install a separate DNS server, or we can uh, you use uh, the uh, uh, the same uh, the DNS which is there in this uh, OpenStack? Uh, designate okay dns see dns is not uh, for this purpose dns is like you have a fully qualified domain name and yeah. inside that domain name you have multiple ips or you have single ip also what happens like if uh, for example i say google.com so i simply type google.com in my browser but 
actually google doesn't dot uh, com doesn't work on this url right it has some ip but i don't know that ip because i don't uh, interact with google uh, organization on day to day basis and i don't know like which ip is up or which is down or they might increase some ip or they may delete some ip also so that is why we have this dns dns actually helps humans to in, in, um, instead of memorizing the ips rather they just simply go on some your names so when i say google.com and whatever dns i am connected so if i'm connected to dns uh, my nearest dns then that dns uh, my browser is going to talk my system is going to talk and tell that this url give me the ip so it will give you ip and then your machine is going to talk to another machine on that ip because machine to machine communication happens on ip but when we as a human interact we always remember the names so we say google.com but when my laptop actually talk to google.com it is on the ip so this is the role of dns now when you are saying that you want to access a vm on a browser right so to access vm in your browser you, you should either like uh, simply give the ip of that particular vm instance you don't need to give any url like uh, simply url means that you name instead of name if you give ip you should directly access you don't need to have VM yeah no we are able to access through ip but uh, we, we cannot um, means, uh, ask everyone to use it through ip that's why we want to give an url so that they can uh, access through the urls okay that's okay. why that's why we thought of uh, implementing dns a separate dns server so in that case yes in that case what you can do you can have a dns so see now when coming to the openstack dns so if you provided that the openstack which you have deployed has a dns support support available by default then definitely you can use but uh, as i said that uh, your company might be using your own customized uh, openstack right they don't uh, go with the community one yeah yeah they have the customized the uh, openstack so if you have dns service available in your openstack definitely you can go and use that service but if you don't have then what i recommend you can simply create a vm in your openstack that vm you can install any open open source uh, dns one example is your bind dns which is a buckley's uh, dns it is an open source software and very light weighted application you just install one vm in your lab in your environment and in that vm you install uh, bind dns and in that bind dns you can do configuration so you can create your zone file in that zone file you can put a url and that url against you can put the ips how many ips you want to have now to your client you can ask them to connect to your dns so whenever they need to access a url first their machine need to communicate to your dns and then your dns will provide ip for that particular instance in this way you can achieve this requirement yeah yeah got it got it got it any other question uh, krishna ji uh, what are the prerequisite to install openstack in laptop if any ID? to install openstack in your laptop uh, the very first thing is that you should have at least two cpu v cpu in your vm so you first install do one thing install opera oracle virtual box in your laptop after installing oracle virtual box in your laptop you will just see how many cpus you are getting when you are creating a new vm so how many uh, cpus are allowed also check that if you should have at least like at least 6 to 8 gb of ram because if you go with little less resources now then your installation may take more time so my recommendation go with at least 6 to 8 gb of ram uh, virtual ram i'm talking about physical ram you couldn't have any but uh, at that time also ensure that you don't run any any of any extra software when you are running your oracle virtual box close all the applications let your oracle virtual box alone run and then uh, at least two cpu v cpu and 6 to 8 gb of ram and storage when i say go with at least 60 to 60 gb or if you can give or minimum 50 gb you should give 50 gb of your storage uh, virtual storage with three resources install uh, centos 8 centos 8 or centos 7 i go with the centos 7 or you can even install ubuntu ubuntu 20 uh, 20.0 uh, and after installing operating system either ubuntu or centos these two operating system you only go don't go with rhel because it is a license based go with centos or with ubuntu once you are done you go with the basic networking and other things once these stuffs are done then i will share you link uh, there is a link how you can install uh, openstack in your laptop it doesn't take more time if everything is like it's a dev stack based installation so it will not take more time it's directly going to clone so you are going to clone the openstack software from the github using git clone command 
and it will download all the software required. The latest one it will download, it will download Xena because that is the latest release. And then uh, you can start your installation. It's a very small plug and play kind of installation. It doesn't take much time. So if everything is in place, so maximum one hour it will take and your open stack will be deployed. Thank you. Any other question? No, thank you, Krishna. Okay. So guys, uh, thank you very much for your time. So next class will be on next Sunday. And uh, I will discuss the deployment scenario, how we'll deploy OpenStack in commercial. Also, we'll start discussing each services one by one. And then we will see uh, if you have any feedback, you can definitely share it to me. Like if you want me to include any specific topic, I will all try to include that one also. So with this, thank you very much. I hope you have a good day. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. So yes. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.